Thomas Buick Travels, Adventure, Then a Partnership In October 1774, Thomas Buick's seven-year indentures ended. He was 21 years old. Buick remained with Bealby until Christmas of 1774, then left and went back to Cherryburn and spent most of his time there, but continuing to engrave for Bealby's workshop and for various printers in Newcastle. In the last few months of his time as an apprentice, Buick had begun engraving the cuts for fables by the late Mr Gay. The engraving for the fable of the Hound and the Huntsman had so impressed his master that it was sent off, displayed with the text of the fable, in a bordered quarto sheet to the Society for the Encouragement of Arts, Manufactures and Commerce in London. In January 1776, Buick was awarded a prize of seven guineas and the money was given to his mother. In June of that year, delighting in his freedom, Buick took off for a walking tour with his dog, Witch. Heading west, he stayed with his old crony, Thomas Spence, now teaching in Hayden Bridge. Buick then went to see his mother's brother in Ainstable, Cumberland, then travelled north into Scotland through the Trossachs, a journey of more than 300 miles before sailing home from Leith to Shields, returning on the 12th of August. His experiences form a vivid section of his memoir. In September 1776, Buick went on a collier to London, a three-week journey. He roomed in Wharton's Court off Gray's Inn Road and drank in the George Inn, Brook Street and the Hole in the Wall Tavern, Fleet Street, where Newcastle exiles tended to congregate. <clears throat> there was little that he liked about London. He found the people uncongenial and his fellow tradesmen, while anxious to see what he was doing, unwilling to reciprocate. In November, in a letter to his godmother's daughter, Elizabeth Hymers, he wrote, I must first begin by telling you that I like it or like to live in it very badly. And though I might always continue to meet with the greatest encouragement imaginable, yet would I rather live in both poverty and insecurity in Newcastle. Buick had a miserable time in London. Severely homesick, he found Cockneys to be a saucy, impudent and ignorant set. He also succumbed to fever, perhaps smallpox, which left his face scarred. After nine months in London, Buick returned to Newcastle in June 1777. He set up at Ned Hatfield's, a flax dresser, someone who prepared flax for spinning by removing straw, on the north side of St Nicholas's graveyard, probably close to the Victoria statue. Buick had been unwilling to set up as a rival to Bealby. He could not stand a set up in opposition to his master. However, as soon as he returned from London, mutual friends persuaded them into a partnership, Bealby and Buick, which lasted from September 1777 for 20 fruitful years and saw the publication of much of the work on which Buick's wider reputation rests. While the general trade of the workshop continued in metal engraving with space set aside for the rolling presses used for printing copper plates, the amount of wood engraving increased, though it seldom amounted to more than 10% of any week's activity. Buick's work ranged from tiny woodcuts for folk tales to diagrams for weighty texts. The partnership lasted until 1797, when William Charnley, a major bookseller and publisher, presided over a dispute between Bealby and Buick over the rights of authorship 
of birds, which was decided in Buick's favour.